Hi friends, thanks for joining me today. I brought a little friend with me today. This is Conlin, my dog. Last week we talked about the birth of Jesus and this week we're gonna talk about the shepherds which came to see him as a child. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. Okay, so this is the next part of Luke. And um, if you wanna check out the birth of Jesus, you can check that video. I'll link a card up here. Um, this is really interesting because these shepherds were responsible for huge flocks of sheep um, and they probably worked together on it. And it was their responsibility to take care of these sheep. It was their job to make sure that they had good food to eat, good grass, and would take them different places where there was better grazing. And um, they had to stay with them night and day. They helped the um, ewes when they were having lambs. Oops. They helped the ewes when they were having lambs. They also had to guard them from wolves and bears and things. In fact, that's some of the qualifications that David gave when he was ready to fight Goliath in the power of the Lord. He said, I fought these um, wild creatures taking care of my sheep. I can definitely, <laughs> with the Lord's help, take care of this Goliath guy. All right, so these guys were watching their flocks by night. Suddenly, there was a bright light. I'm gonna have to put you down and come in because I'm getting excited. There we go. Suddenly there was a bright light and it was the glory of the Lord shone around them. And um, I grew up here in the King James and they were sore afraid, which means that they were terrified. <laughs> and I would be too if in the middle of the night, all of a sudden the glory of the Lord shone all around and um, an angel came and spoke to, me, to us. Okay. And here's what the angel said. He said, do not be afraid. Isn't that interesting how many times it says, do not be afraid when God speaks to his people, even through angels and messengers. He said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. So not just the people of Israel, all people everywhere. This is the good news. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Um, and he tells them how to find this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. I find this really interesting. This is the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, God Almighty himself. Okay. Not only was he born in a manger where animals eat to poor parents, as we'll find out soon, um, we'll find out how we know that Mary and Joseph were poor. And the big announcement, the first people to hear about this birth were the shepherds. See, shepherds were like the lowest of the low of society. These weren't the big wigs. These were poor guys. Um, they were looked down on by everybody, you know, like, oh, the shepherds. Ugh. Nobody wanted to, to have that role. Usually it was given to young boys as they were growing up and then you grew out of it, right? So if you're still an adult being a shepherd, you're just like, ha, yeah, we don't want to associate with that guy. But these are the people that God proclaimed the birth of the Messiah to. That in and of itself shows the truth of what the angel said. Good news of great joy for all people. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter what your nationality, all people. This is good news for each one of us. And so the angel says, you will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And um, <laughs> like I said, this is pretty incredible. Jesus born in a, in, in a manger. And suddenly, I love this part. Suddenly there was a great company of the heavenly host, a huge angelic choir appeared with the angel praising God and saying, this is a famous quote. You've probably heard it before. Glory to God in the highest or in heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. You know what? Sometimes in the holiday stuff, you'll see peace on earth and they leave off that last part. That last part is important because it speaks to who Jesus is. See, it's not just peace on earth. It's peace on earth because of Jesus, because of who he is. This special child is the way we can have peace because in our sin, we are living as enemies to God. And we can't fix that. We can't make things right on our own. Jesus came. He was born a baby. He grew up, lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. 
And yet he died on the cross to take our punishment for sin. So that if we trust and we believe in him, we will be saved. And it doesn't end there. Jesus came back to life again on the third day. It was God's way of saying, I accept that payment. Yes, anyone who believes in Jesus will be saved and will live like Jesus. That's incredible stuff. That's what the angels were announcing, not just general peace on earth. Peace on earth because of Jesus. Because through Jesus and a relationship with him, we can have a right relationship with God and peace. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And that's why Jesus was born. So this is interesting too. The shepherds um, talked amongst themselves and said, let's go. Let's just go. This is really incredible because remember, they were responsible for these sheep. Sometimes if something happened to the sheep, the shepherds had to pay the price for anything the uh, a wolf killed or a bear killed. And it, you know, because they're watching the sheep for somebody else and that somebody else would expect a lot. And the fact that they would leave their sheep in the middle of the night, which is a dangerous time, to go and see this baby is huge. That shows the impact of encountering that glory of God and God's messenger and the message that they care, that the angel gave to them about the birth of Jesus. It's pretty incredible. And not only that, they went to go see that these things were true. And then they went and they told everybody, everybody who would listen, they told about this because it was so exciting what happened to them and about this baby. They told everybody. And they went back to their flocks, worshiping God and praising him. <sighs> what about us? What is our reaction? Have you encountered the glory of God? Have you seen God working in mighty ways in your life and in the lives of those around you? What is our reaction when that happens? Do we tell people and are so excited, you got to hear what God is doing? Or are we shy and we're like, oh, I don't want to share. You know, sometimes some of us are shy to begin with, and that's our natural bent. But the Holy Spirit will give us courage and the strength we need to do what he's asked us to do. See, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but he gives us power and love and self-discipline. And not only that, this is something I've said a lot lately. Stepping out of your comfort zone is scary, but the Holy Spirit will give you the strength to follow him. Yeah, it may be hard at the beginning, but it gets easier with practice. And more than that, when we really take a look in God's face, when we really see the Lord for who he is and what he has done for us, and we ask the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to show us God's glory, show us how God is working in our lives and the lives around us, when we really see that and grasp it, we can't help but celebrate and tell others. That is what this, this passage is all about. Lord, give us the strength to worship and praise you. Show us your glory, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I put the references on here a little bit wrong. <laughs> this is actually Luke 2, 8 through 20. But if you would like to have family, family Bible studies sent to your email, free family Bible studies that relate to these children's sermons, you can click on the QR code or join the e-team in the link below. You also might like these other videos that talk about what is glory and another related video. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.